Some people asked me to show a little bit of Hello System, which I would like to do in this video. So here I'm running Hello System on a FreeBSD 12.1 release. Um, Hello System is a operating system that is intended to be welcoming to switchers from the Mac. So while we are not attempting to do a one-to-one -one skin or clone or anything, uh, some of the ideas and operating philosophies resemble the Mac. So it starts by the fact that you have icons on the desktop and they are on the right hand side as they should be. So this should already right here be very familiar to Mac users. Then first thing you, you will notice in the system actually is the global menu bar and when you open an application, this global menu bar gets filled by the command that commands that are used within the application that you have open. So if I open, let's say, another application, notice that the menu bar changes. Now we have different menus in here with different commands. And also this should be very familiar to Mac users. So as I said, Hello System is not intended to be a clone of anything, so we take the liberty to develop further on those concepts and to make changes as we see fit. For example, we bring in the possibility to search the menu very easily by just pressing Alt blank. We enter this search field where we can search for menu commands. So I could bring up the about this computer box that I have just shown earlier by typing in AB and pressing the enter key. And here we go, about this computer shows up. So this works not only for system commands but also for the commands in the menus themselves. So for example here I have a German uh, language setup and let's just have a look at, at the menu. For example, about here in this application is called Uber and sure enough I can bring it up in the same way by pressing Alt spacebar, typing in U, B, Enter, here we are. As you can probably imagine, this leads to a very, very quick operation of applications because you don't have to remember the shortcuts and if you notice here, this command doesn't even have a shortcut. But by being able to search everything in the global menu, this allows for a very quick operation of the system. Now, there is also a dock, but not real fancy, very basic dock at this point. What I would like to point out is how we deal with applications. Now, if you're coming from other systems uh, in the Linux world, for example, then you are probably aware that applications come with desktop files. If we have a look at USR local share applications, that's what you get here. Uh, we can open those with a text editor and what we see then is that the application itself is just a text file with .desktop in the end. It's not more than that. Uh, and it actually executes when you double click that file a command that resides somewhere within the file system, in this case USR, local, bin and so on. That is not how things work on the Mac. So if we look at the applications directory here, first of all notice that this is not in the USR tree, it's just slash applications. You can see um, that those applications at first sight look like real normal applications. I can double click application opens just as usual. But in fact if I right click here and select open a new tab I can have a look at what is inside and as you can see this application is actually a directory at application slash name of the application dot app and it contains a bunch of files. It contains the main executable file and the resources directory which contains auxiliary files such as icons and also a description. What you put inside here uh, into the app directory
trajectory can uh, really be very different depending on which application we are talking about. What I just showed you is just a little placeholder that opens a traditionally installed application. Let me do that again. Open a new tab. You see the main file here. We can open that. And if we do, we see it basically just executes something from the usual system location. Well, that is just a placeholder. That's not very exciting. But let's look at an actual application that is shipped in this format. For example, let's take Lector. Lector is an ebook reader. If I double click it, you can see here we have a nice book. And if I right click open a new tab, we can peek inside. So what we see here is that the main entry point of the application is just a symlink into the resources directory. And here we have the actual uh, file. Where is it? It's probably inside here somewhere. So as you can see, this is a collection of Python files and well, they behave like, like an application because everything is really contained in this directory. We can even go a step further than that. So, for example, I took the Scribus application here and if we peek inside this one, then you will see that there is a directory called prefix. And this contains the usual Unix file system structure. There is USR, local, bin, where is my bin? Here is my bin. And there's all the files that are needed to run this application. Again, everything contained in one single file. Very Mac-like. So now that we have this system, of course we need a way to execute those applications easily. And the tool to do that is called launch. If I open a shell here. I can type in launch. And then just the name of the application. For example, let's take, what shall we take? Property. And sure enough, the application has been launched. What happened actually is that the file system was checked in certain locations, such as the application directory and its subdirectories and as you can see the whole, <coughs> the whole lookup operation took 11 micro milliseconds which is really not noticeable so yeah this means that you can for example organize your applications in any way you would like for example you can add directories like preferences here are some applications that have to deal with preferences and I was able to just put them into a into a folder and organize them this way. Of course all of this is also nicely integrated with the global menu so if we go to system here we can see those directories. For example there is applications, there is the preferences folder and there is the utilities folder. If I make any changes they get reflected here as well. For the applications that are coming with Hello System many of them are written in Python, which means that they are very easily editable because you don't have to compile anything, you can edit everything on the fly and just work that way. So again, just right click, open a new tab and have a look inside. Yeah, let's now have a quick look at what comes with the system in terms of utilities. Here, what I'm showing here is an installed version of the system, but of course you can download an ISO file, which is a live system. That one won't come with that many applications pre-installed, but the principles are still the same. What every Hello system comes with is preferences. This is the usual stuff. You can look up servers on the network, you can adjust your sound, you can adjust global shortcut keys. For example, by pressing Control alt t it always opens a terminal very quickly, or by pressing Control alt i it would open a web browser very quickly. Things like that can easily be adjusted in here to your own liking. Then we have the sharing application, which I quickly showed. This allows you to set a computer name, it allows you to SSH into your machine. It also allows you to do local screen sharing. 
Then we have something to adjust the screen settings, to adjust your printers, to adjust your, your card. Let's open this actually. Uh, here you can select the keyboard language very easily by just one click and uh, you don't have to do much more than that. Uh, very easy. And finally you can adjust some desktop settings. Now about the keyboard, we have a special feature here. Uh, personally I always wonder why we have to set the keyboard language manually when in fact USB keyboards, at least some, are perfectly capable of telling the system their language. So what we have implemented here is keyboard language auto detection for Raspberry Pi keyboards. Which means if you attach the original Raspberry Pi keyboard then the keyboard language and even the system language and time zone is preset in a more sensible way than just setting everything to English all the time. This is the reason why you see German here on the screen because I have attached a German Raspberry Pi keyboard. Things like that are everywhere in the system. The overall idea is to make things just work um, and make everything simple. As you can see, there are some ideas that are welcoming to switchers coming from the Mac, but it's not a one-to-one -one clone. Um, as you could see earlier, for example, if we have a look at how these application directories work, actually they're simplified. So the idea is to simplify everything, right? To, to take the core and make it even more easy to use and even more pleasant. That's the basic idea of Hello System. So let's have a look at the utilities. There are quite some utilities that come with the system. One is boot environments, which is very interesting because this allows you to create practically a snapshot that you can boot into. What is this good for? Well, if I want to, for example, make drastic changes to the system, for example, upgrade to a major new version, I can just create a new boot environment name, a, a new uh, boot environment, let's call it test. And as you can see, within a second I have created this new boot environment, which is a bootable snapshot. It was very quick, basically instant, to create and it takes up uh, almost no space, as long as this snapshot hasn't diverged from the system. So as I go on and I change stuff, the size for this additional snapshot becomes larger. So uh, if I want to get rid of it, I can just click remove here and I can remove it again. Or I could also boot into another state of the system by just clicking, by selecting it here. So it becomes active on reboot and then click restart. But let's undo this. So yeah, boot environments. Then uh, what else do we have? Well, there is a feature called Remote Assistance, which is really very interesting if you want to get help from a friend. Oh, that's probably an old version that I have here. Uh, I should really show you the recent one, which is under Hello System Utilities. This is just my development stuff here. Remote Assistance. You just open this application, it starts an encrypted tunnel using peer-to-peer -peer technology and soon there will be an ID here on the screen, here it is. And basically I just take this ID and send it to a friend. For example, I could now open a chat application, paste in this ID and the friend then would just go to the same application, choose Give Assistance and enter the same ID there. If something wouldn't have crashed. Why isn't that working? Yeah, there seems to be a bug. Great thing. To debug stuff is open a new tab and just run it this way. So, the other person opens the remote assistant client. What's going on here?
and enters this uh, ID that I've just shown, this one. Just enter it here, click connect, it will connect and it will be possible to share the screen that way. So as you could clearly see there are still some glitches in the system which need to be worked out uh, but for that I would like actually to have some help from the community, some contributors to the project. Um, if you are interested in doing that then please visit the web page which is on GitHub. Let me show you. So it is at hellosystem.github.io slash docs. Here we are. Here you can find end user information like a user guide describing all the different system components and you can also find the developer guide which guides you through the key components of the system and uh, also uh, points out what we would like to have especially your help with. Okay, so that's a quick overview over Hello System. So far it is still pre-release experimental software um, far from being polished, but yeah, let's add that polish. Making stuff real simple is the core idea. To give you just one example is the Create Live Media tool. Let me open this. Here I can download a live image and write it to an attached storage device by just selecting one of the versions. Let's take this one, click continue. Now attach a disk. Uh, I don't want to write to this one because this is my main SSD, but I could now attach a USB drive, just select that, press continue and the live media would be written to the device. If I want to finally install the system to the hard disk, uh, there is the installer, which allows you to do that also very easy and should also be very welcoming to Mac users as well. Okay, so this is it. Was a quick demonstration. Um, yeah, let me know what you think, and I'm looking forward to your use, bug reports, ideas, and contributions.